So this might be a matter of preference. I recently got myself another Venom suit mod on Spider-Man and I'm just here flexing it and testing it out. Actually, the main thing is, or the big breakthrough is that I can actually now use the mods for this game on PC. I've been racking my brain trying to get him to work, but they just hadn't worked. So now that I've figured out at least one set of mods that do work, I'm just pursuing every single different modification of skins or suits that I can lay my hands on. And some of you have actually said that there are very, very beautiful designs out there. And you're right. I'm actually seeing them and they're pretty cool. While I was actually testing out the suit, I played the opening scene of Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. Basically, you know, Spider-Man 2018's entire storyline just done with a new actor and, you know, some new aspects added to it. But this opening scene for the Spider-Man game was actually pretty cool when it came out. I've played it a lot. Uh, actually, I've played the opening scene a lot. In fact, I have a video where I did a playthrough of it with different skins switching in between. Guys, that playthrough was harrowing because I literally had to play it like three or four times to get my video clips together. It's a video that's lost somewhere in my channel. If I find the link, I'll put it in the description for you guys. And after playing it, I remembered a comment that somebody made and said, you know, as much as I love Spider-Man, Batman Arkham City is still my favorite game. So I said, you know what, let me fire up a brand new playthrough of Batman Arkham City and let me play the opening of both games. I have to go ahead and give a disclaimer. I am a huge Batman fan. My bias leans towards Batman anytime, any day. But in trying to judge both games and their openings, it was very clear that the Arkham games had a very snappy action urgency to it that really pulled you into the immersion. I don't know if this is mostly based on the fact that Batman, his world, his writing and the way the character was depicted is very dark, very gritty, you know, some sort of a harrowing experience as in what the developers wanted you to, you know, pretty much feel versus a Spider-Man game where they wanted you to have, you know, this sense of involvement as to what was already going on in your world compared to, say, with Batman being the centerpiece of the entire story. These two story plot points and the way they're actually depicted could really affect, you know, how you actually see the game itself and it's actually pretty cool and what it even really you know showed me as well was if you actually remember the opening opening like the beginning the first thing you do in Batman Arkham City you actually play as Catwoman now I know that a lot of people have also been talking about you know the fact that we're going to be able to play as Miles Morales and Peter Parker in the Spider-Man game but I have to give it to the Arkham games here that as much as, you know, right now, Rocksteady is right now in the oven doing some other stuff. Hopefully they get back to their single player expertise. They brought out the double protagonist idea in the superhero genre around that time with their game. I don't know if they introduced it. You had other games like Shattered Dimensions that actually had it and did it in different ways. But they made it in a cohesive way where their systems and their mechanics and their storytelling and their progression which is a huge influence and foundation for the, you know, Spider-Man game, was actually telling the story in that way. You're playing as Catwoman in this game. In fact, there is even a spot where they have you. I don't know if you played Arkham City. Spoiler, huge, massive spoiler coming. They have you actually make a choice to go back and help Batman because Batman was pretty much in a bind. So you as Catwoman, you take the time. And you have to respond to that question. There's only one right answer, but you switch to her temporarily playing as the character, traversing the world, dealing with bad guys and NPCs as her. You even have this one time, I think, I don't remember, it's been a while since I've played Arkham City, where you even deal with Poison Ivy. So the double protagonist idea of Arkham City is actually still heavy and very strong as its influence for the Spider-Man games. But when you look at the openings and all of that, you really have to give it to Arkham City for being the one that was able to pull you into the immersion. Your superhero being kidnapped and captured is a very strong writing and strong story point that anyone who's in the superhero genre has to actually go ahead and respect. There is no doubt that both games are strong powerhouses in their own right. But there's just one thing that makes Arkham City or I guess a few things that makes Arkham City kind of edge out or maybe find its way as kind of this really top tier superhero game. And I think the story was probably it and not just the story, but the way the story was told and the way the story was depicted. I guess Paul Dini carries because he was on the writing of that game. And Paul Dini is a veteran having written a lot of the DC stuff. 
it wasn't necessarily a shocker that the quality of Arkham City was where it was. And even when you compare Arkham City with Arkham Knight, you really can't even find that kind of quality. Because at the time, I think Dini was working on a project with Marvel or so, and they could not get him into the Arkham Knight project. So Rocksteady used in-house writers who did a decent job, but nothing comparable to what Paul Dini was able to, and the writing team anyways in the Arkham City game was able to go ahead and flesh out. I almost wish that Dini or writers of his caliber would probably work on a Spider-Man games, but seems like Insomniac already has a good storytelling going. But again, your story could be really great, but how you depict that story is really important. And your act one is very, very interesting. So what I think Insomniac is doing is because of what we got to see in this gameplay showcase, it appears to me that they're going with that really gruesome, harrowing, uh, you know, very, you know, gut wrenching aspect of the storytelling for this Spider-Man 2 game. They're actually taking that little side note, that little tidbit uh, and trying to kind of move, th move things away from the really playful beginnings that we got to see. Yes. You know, when you look at the first Spider-Man game and how it opened up with Spider-Man versus, you know, Fisk, it was kind of this really interesting laid back Spider-Man style of, you know, or I would say adrenaline rush style of this youthful exuberant Spider-Man is just really excited about everything. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then when you look at Miles's opening, it's this, oh, me and Peter, we're running all over the place. We're chasing Rhino. Oh, oh my. It's, it's all of that. But when you look now and you see the way they've actually depicted Spider-Man 2, you can already tell that there's a huge difference. I don't know. I think Arkham City is still influencing this entire game as it stands. And it's actually interesting to see. But these are just my thoughts. Like I said, I am biased towards Spider uh, towards uh, the Arkham games, uh, even though, you know, the Spider-Man games are quite solid. The fans love them. But still, it's no doubt that, you know, Brian Intihar did say that they looked at the Arkham games. Seems like they're still looking at the Arkham games, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's actually good. If they will only keep looking at the Arkham games, if Rocksteady would only keep looking at the Arkham games, right? If Square Enix's Crystal Dynamics could have kept looking at the Arkham games, we probably need more studios to keep looking at the Arkham games so that they can keep making games like these. It's interesting to see what's going on today, nonetheless, with gaming all over the place, but... I guess we're going to just stick with the old school stuff and hopefully the old school stuff can continue to be influences or foundations anyways for the new things that we're getting in terms of games and stories. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video. Appreciate you guys so much. Peace out.